Hey everyone, Chris and Jim back here with another update. We've been getting a lot of questions about stabilization versus rental vacancy. And this is a really important thing when you're figuring out your performance and your overall property investment. So we wanted to take a little time today to make sure that we explain the differences in the two so you know how your property investment works moving forward. Chris, do you want to break this down a little bit? Yeah, I think it's very timely that we're discussing this. You know, in the prior years before uh, this year, so after uh, after COVID and until, uh, until late uh, 2022, uh, you know, we were leasing homes in record times, uh, very little vacancy in the market, you know, rents were screaming through the roof. Nobody really had to think about stabilization because there was no stabilization period. You know, the properties were stabilized as soon as they were finished. Uh, but now we're in a more normalized market where we have to account for stabilization when we're thinking about a new property purchase. And it's really important that our investors set aside, you know, those reserves for that stabilization period. And, you know, and, and so what is the stabilization period? Well, the stabilization period, by definition, is the time period from when you complete the home until a home is a new, newly constructed home gets a CO and is done, and until it's officially been put into service with the first tenant that's going into place. So you have that gap in there. That, that's your stabilization period. Now, on an individual home, you know, it's either 100% occupied or 100% vacant. But you know, stabilization periods, you know, are more meant as you know from a portfolio standpoint. But you know, the, it's the same the same truth you know holds true with with uh, an individual property as it does per se an entire apartment complex. So if somebody's bringing a 150 unit apartment complex online, you know, they got to think about how many units can I lease in any given week, any given month, and so how many am I building, and how long is it going to take me to fully stabilize this community. Yep. So when, when they do that, they say, well, hey, it's, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to lease, uh, you know, 15 units a week and uh, it's 150 units. So 10 weeks and I'm going to, I'm going to be fully leased up. So I have a 10 week stabilization period, right? All right. Well, same holds true for, for what we're doing here, even though we're doing it on individual homes or duplexes or quadruplexes for, for our customers. But now we have to plan for that stabilization period. You know, we went from, you know, next to no days on market to now our average days on market are up over 30. They're like 36 days on market on average right now for a property. And, you know, then the tenant has to move in. So you have another 15 days after that, say, for the, for the tenant to actually move in the house. Now you've got to account for that. So, you know, now we're almost pushing 60 days from closing until on average a tenant is in the home. Well, that could be two mortgage payments. Yep. So, you know, our clients need to make sure that they have that, that two mortgage payment set aside and in their plan. You know, when we give a pro forma, you know, we're typically giving a pro forma based on a stabilized, you know, a stabilized asset. And it's a stabilized asset on an average across an entire portfolio. So, for instance, again, you take a single family home, well, you say, well, you know, the average vacancy is 4%. Well, yeah, that's great, but I own one house. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means you're either going to be 100% occupied or 0% Zero. occupied. So there will never be a 4% uh, vacancy. So, okay, well, why do you put a 4% vacancy in my pro forma is the question. Because it's, it's really based on the average of a portfolio. So let's say you have a property that gets leased up and then the tenant stays in it for four years. Well, you accounted for that 4% vacancy in year one, in year two, in year three, in year four. And again, that's 4% vacancy per year after stabilization. So now you've banked 16%. Uh -huh. So now all of a sudden, you know, you do have a move out and that tenant moves out. Well, now you've banked up that 4%, you know, technically you've saved it. Now, whether you've, you know, gone out and spent it or not, you know, you've technically set that aside in your pro forma to be able to pay for that expense at a future date. Now, some of some of our very, very, say, uh, very, very prudent uh, clients that are very, very diligent about uh, about their uh, pro formas will actually set that money aside. Yep. So they'll take that 4% that they didn't spend and they'll put it in a savings account. And the next year they'll do the same thing, same if they didn't spend any maintenance dollars. And all of that goes over here because it's going to be saved up for when it actually does get used. Yes. So, you know, so that, you know, that really is the difference, you know, when we talk about stabilization versus vacancy and how you account for those things when you're buying an individual property 
versus a whole portfolio. Now, again, you know, you'll hear Jim say it, you know, numerous times, you know, our most successful clients are buying three, five, ten properties because now they have a portfolio yeah. and these averages start to work out over a much larger portfolio than they might on just an individual property. But we all have to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, I started with one house just like many of our, our clients have started with one house. Well, it's probably good to point out that we're working with over 2,000 units now. So when we're going with this, and we do do a, a different look at both of our new construction and our overall portfolio, uh, we can tell you the overall portfolio with older houses can be larger, but we really hone down on the new construction, which shows that lower vacancy, but as we said, that's over 2,000 units. So you have to go with the averages, and averages are important here because you say, well, now that this is done, can a property never rent in 12 days? Well, no, it, the average is 36 days. So that means there's people that are renting earlier than that. There's people that are renting longer than that. And what we always talk about, the initial investment up front, when, when, when an institution group or a professional investor looks at stabilization, they're saying, what is the capital going in right now to get this to the point where it's going to start performing for me. And that's an important distinction, like Chris is saying, and something that you guys want to continually go over and look for the long term. As you know, our principles, number one principle for us, for us personally and now for our build to rent system, invest for the long term. And when you're investing for the long term and you look to the long term, we really have to ask the question, man, 12 days is great. But does 62 days really ruin the investment? And the answer is, of course, no. And if it did, then I don't think I'd want to be in real estate investing to the degree that I am. And that's why we wanted to make sure we explained this to you. Of course, things, we wish that it was still 12 days on the market. But things are still at a great pace, I'd say, just where they were at 2019. And we want to make sure that you feel confident in what you're doing. And when you start to understand from the professional investor mindset of what stabilization looks like and what rental vacancy, I think you're going to have more of a confidence, more of a knowledge, and more of a um, just overall comfort for the overall investment. Is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think that's it. Well, we appreciate you guys listening today. Any questions on this, make sure you talk to the marketing and leasing directors that you're working with because they can help explain this. They have a good knowledge of this as well. Uh, and also your sales counselors. They understand this well. A lot of them are investors themselves. So this is a really important subject that you want to understand whether you're starting out or maybe you own 10 properties already. This is a real fundamental principle that I think once you understand it, it's going to help your investing moving forward. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.